everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I've got a one streak despite winning five in a row. Hey, such is life. I've got bigger fish to fry right now. Our Eden Seed, the CF, the center fielder, Vernon Wells, to TJ7. Let's get this show on the road. Don't let that Vernon Wells reference um, make you think I know anything about Major League Baseball. Really, what I do know is living in Canada, and there's only one Major League Baseball team in Canada, so if you lived in Canada between the years of like 2002 and 2011 or something, you know who Vernon Wells is, because even when the Jays sucked, they're like, Vernon Wells with his 30th home run of the year. The Blue Jays finished third in the division yet again. Anyway, Vernon Wells. The end. Now, National Hockey League, I know something about you. want to ask me about uh, what I think about Frankie Corrado being taken on waivers by the Leafs after the Canucks put him on there. Hey, you know what I think? If Jim Benning's confident that we've got the defensive depth that we can afford to let a prospect that seems to have stymied his own development go, then that's fine. You know, there's always stuff going on behind the scenes that we as fans don't know about. Uh, I know it's in fan nature to question and, and kind of arm... Whoa, yeah, Guppy's head and a secret room. To question and kind of, you know... Backseat GM, pretty fly, full health. I love how I keep coming back to this train of thought as if I meant it as not a joke. <laughs> I did mean it as a joke, but then I, I caught myself uh, starting to care a little bit, and I was like, no, people need to know what I think about GM, JB. Uh, okay, Stigmata, also fine. I know that as Eve, we want to get into that Blood of the Martyr, not Blood of the Martyr, Horror Babylon state as soon as possible, but um, the most important thing is, is that we get good items. And if we can also get a spirit heart, that's when we're going to try to swing this whore of Babylon sitch. That's where we're going to get that sitch set up. Um, admittedly, Blood of the Martyr... Was that Blood of the Martyr or was it Stigmata? Now it's freaking Stigmata, wasn't it? Look, again, I've got other things in the brain right now. Is Trevor Linden truly the best, uh, you know, president of hockey operations that we could get, or is he just a symbolic figurehead to, you know, make the fans feel better about the questionable decisions being made by management? That's the kind of stuff that's on my mind right now. Um, that's sarcasm, actually. I'm mostly just, you know, excited for Bo Horvat's sophomore season. But, um, we're, uh... We're fine. It doesn't give you that much damage, but it gives us enough that we're getting momentum. We're going to get a second orbital here, which is awesome. We've already got a guppy item, and we got uh, a deal with the devil coming on the next floor. If we can manage it, we need to get a spirit heart quickly or just not take any damage. There's our tinted rock, so we're really hoping for... Thank you, pretty fly. Uh, really hoping for a bomb drop here. Don't use your orbital. You know, it might take you more shots than you're comfortable with to actually get the kills, but it's better to do so than to, than to not. Health up. That's awesome, even though we don't really want to... In our ideal world, we don't really want to make use of this as Eve. Um, it's better to have it than not have it. We could always trade it on a deal with the devil, maybe. And it's a contingency plan in case we don't end up making our Whore of Babylon dreams come true. That is still not a bomb. It's, it's... What a tease, right? We're like one bomb away from almost assuredly being able to get a deal with the devil. And we still do not have it. All sorts of other... Co oh, no! I took red heart damage. So stupid of me. That's. I was going to say, now you drop a bomb. We could still get a deal with the devil. If we can't get a deal with the devil, or we don't, rather, um, our best idea here is probably going to be to just try to finagle a spirit heart and uh, and whore a Babylon state on this floor. Might as well take Broken Onk. All right, we can still get uh, away with the deal with the devil here as long as we don't get hit by pin. If we don't get hit by pin, we have a chance. We also only have one key, so we're really kind of lacking in the consumable department here. The red heart damage is just a killer, though. There was, like, no reason for it to happen. And I should be a little bit... Oh, wow, that was dangerous. Should be a little bit less aggressive on this pin fight as well, considering I don't really stand to gain that much by getting in close. Next time, though, if he pops up, we're going to walk into him because uh, the orbital will kill him very, very quickly. He'll die before he can shoot. Nah, we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. We did get a deal with the devil. We got a speed upgrade, which is fine. And it's a uh, contract from below, which is a good item. Is it a life changer? No. But it's it's solid enough that we can, you know, definitely not be mad about it. And there's our live bombs. We also got remote detonator. Now, remote detonator is not even close to what we want. However, Basically, I'm just going to treat this as, as five bombs. And the fact that we've got five bombs means we have some options available to us on this floor. For example, blow this up. 
Got a golden chest, all that hemming and hawing, and then we get a golden chest. What a disappointment there. Hopefully, Contract from Below actually ends up being exactly what we need, because it is uh, more consumable drops, which is something that we were definitely lacking before. Open the golden chest. It is a single penny and a live bomb. So we traded a bomb and a key for a penny. That is just the... You know, I try to phrase it diplomatically as often as possible, but that's fucking trash. That is a, a very, very poor uh, payout for us. Definitely less than we were expecting. Battery charge is not worth too much here, even if we got him, which we didn't. Shouldn't have said anything, because it's definitely better to have them than not have them. That's going to be our secret room right here. Kind of, you know, process of elimination did. And at least we got more keys. Okay, so we probably could go to our shop. Tell you what, let's blow up these uh, jabroni ponies. and It's a decent amount of money. Alright, so now we go to our shop and we try to sell this Whore of Babylon thing. I would prefer to have more spirit hearts with which to make it work, but we don't. So we choose more damage or more safety. And I'm, I'm most of the time going to choose more damage in this situation. So we'll take ourselves down to one heart. Would have been awesome if we had an arcade as well, but we don't. Two bombs is not going to give us 15 cents, so we don't have to worry about mom's key. As much as I would love to get it, uh, it it's not going to work for us. There's our second secret room, uh, which will just explode and hope for no red hearts. And we got a bomb and a penny, so it ended up being valuable to blow it up. And now we're gone. And was this floor good? Yeah, you know, deal with the devil precedent, contract from below, bombs. It's pretty much the end of it, but... Uh, it's at least acceptable. It's, it's certainly not bad. We are in the Horror of Babylon state. It could fade pretty easily. We're still looking for Spirit Hearts so that we have a little bit of tolerance for, for making a mistake. Can't get those, unfortunately. Uh, that's a very fast boss room, but I'm very interested in it. Whipworm. Yeah, we'll take it. I, I don't think we're likely to use the Broken Ankh. I hope we're not likely to use Broken Ankh. I'm going to make a little bit of a judgment call and try to get... Uh, the spirit heart obviously didn't work out. Um, but that, that's okay because we haven't spent the money yet, so we'll focus on trying to get Black Candle instead now. Because we didn't get enough money to get the spirit heart. We'll focus instead on the strictly better item, you know? Black Candle is a spirit heart, but it's a better version of a spirit heart in the form of a demon heart. And it's also uh, got a passive benefit that's very useful for us. And the added benefit of possibly making my GPU less likely to cause a blue screen of death here. So, you know, there's a lot of positives for this item, even transcending its actual use in-game. So I, I'm a big fan of this one. Also gives us a better deal with the Devil Chance, which is way more valuable than the whole blue screen thing. Uh, tell you what, we probably do want to take it. But I don't want to take it yet. Let's get the value out of the rest of Horror Babylon juice on this floor, and then we'll, uh... Oh, such terrible damage there. And then we'll we'll come back for it. Right now, we're looking for money, and if possible, it'd be awesome to get 20 cents, so we have a chance to get an arcade on the next floor, because I would probably drop left hand... or <laughs> It's just th those words go together in my brain. Um, I would probably drop uh, Guppy's Head for IV Bag, just for its, its future applications and... Not just money, of course, but mainly the Horror of Babylon. Curse Room is tempting. Uh, that's very dangerous. We have to consider it tempting because of our, uh... Yeah, we'll, we'll take the hearts. We have to consider it tempting because of our, uh, guppy precedent already. Okay, two spirit hearts. Blow me up. Buttercup baby just to let me down. Because now we can get back into our Horror of Babylon state. And get some spirit hearts back and have some more survivability. Um, of course, we're gonna lose the Horror of Babylon state soon anyway, but at least we can get it for the rest of this floor and get the Spirit Hearts as well. Nice damage there. Two more keys. I wish I could just exchange those keys outright for money right now. Because I need the money more than I need the keys. Black Candle could be very valuable. Bombs also, like, don't get me wrong, I'd be into those. We're not quite at a one run here from an Eden perspective at all. RoboBaby 2.0 helps. I, I think I'm more positive on this item than I used to be. It's kind of shitty, and there are pretty much objectively objectively better versions of it out there. Like, um, Blue Baby's only friend is substantially more useful. It loses the infinite range, but that's it. Um, was there money down here I could get? Oh, uh, how did I miss that? That's going to allow us to get Black Candle. All, all is uh, forgiven. You know, Robo Baby 2.0, you do this, and that gives me a chance to stack up flies instead. So there's 15 cents. Maybe we don't want the HP, actually. 
Now that I'm thinking about it, you know, we're not in a dangerous position with respect to our own HP. Why would we, um, why would we take a gamble on it when it would cost us the Whore of Babylon state right now? I think instead we'll just head down to the next floor. We, if we bought Black Candle, we wouldn't have enough to get an arcade anyways. And we wouldn't have been able to get in this room either, which I probably will do. And it ended up being just absolutely not worth it. But that's okay, because this is, um, you know, it's all about calculated uh, risks and, and stuff like that. Other bullshit, you know. Other bullshit like that. That's my analysis after literally 900 hours of rebirth. Other bullshit like that. That is freaking me out, by the way. I in Steam, because in regular Binding of Isaac, or Benign, Binding of Isaac, Binding of Isaac Vanilla, I, uh... Didn't use the Steam version for the whole thing, uh, for my whole playthrough over the course of like three years. I only had like 400 hours in the Steam version. Then there was more in Spider Mod and, um, uh, of course you can boot those through Steam, but I didn't. And like Cheat Engine when we were doing those, uh, challenge runs and stuff like that. And then the Binding of Northern Lion Mod and stuff like that. So, uh, I only had like 400 hours. Now I have 900 hours in Rebirth, which. Is not necessarily, it's probably a lot less than Cobalt. He's gotta be like 1500 or something by now. But, when you think about it, the game came out about 365 days ago. So that's like literally two hours and a half per day. And when you say that, people will go, that's not too bad. Two hours and a half per day, every day. It sounds all right, right? But this is not like two and a half hours some days and some days you call in sick. Like this is mathematically the hours have already been put in. I guess that does count streams as well, so that, like there is that. But um, that's a lot of that's a lot of time and a lot of consistency. I guess I am tuning my own horn a little bit here, but I'm I'm proud of myself. But also, when you really see the hours stacked up like that, you're like, man. I mean, let's put it this way: it's recommended that you get like an hour of exercise a day. I didn't do that in 2015, but I did that three times over with respect to Reaver. <laughs> so I think that shows where my priorities lie. Probably, uh, to a, a fault. But, uh, it is what it is. And it, would I change it? No, I, you know, I wouldn't change it. If I would change it, I would take time away from playing Rocket League and get an hour of exercise instead. Not that I don't love Rocket League, but something's gotta give, man. And it ain't gonna be Magic the Gathering. Ball of Tar, Sticky Feet. It's like... It's fine. This is a room where RoboBaby 2.0 actually shines here. Will we hit a thousand hours before Afterbirth? No, mathematically that's extremely unlikely. We've only got like another three weeks and a little bit until Afterbirth comes out. I'm not gonna... It's like 140 hours and 21 days now. It's like seven hours a day. I, I could, but I, it's not worth it just for that sentimental milestone, I think. I don't get sentimental about stuff like that. We will hit a thousand hours in, in Rebirth unless I die in the next three months. I hate saying stuff like that because sometimes I think it's like less likely to have or more likely to happen as a result. You know, the universe has a cosmic sense of humor sometimes. Um, you know, you always see someone, their last tweet is like, uh, Yay, you know, good meal tonight. I mean, I ate a lot of tacos, but it's not like it's gonna kill me. And you're like, Oh, that was your last tweet, dog. You had no idea of knowing how Alanis Morissette esque ironic that would be. Alanis Morissette esque. It's a surprisingly hard expression to say. Alanis Morissette, Esquire. Meats. Ah, uh, I shouldn't have taken it yet in case we could Ah! <laughs> well, at least there's more positives about taking meat than there were about taking just less than three. I think I got hit twice there because I'm an idiot. Meat at least gives us the .3 damage bonus as well, which is not worth what we're spending on it, but... And what we're spending on it is basically our own uh, damage, but... It, at least we have that if we can get down to the permanent Polaroid invincibility point later. You might be hearing a hissing sound in the background. That's that's not my GPU frying itself right now like a like a, an egg at McDonald's at 10:58 a.m. No, it is a um, it is a wife of mine showering. The wife of mine. My wife. How do you humans say it again? I forgot. All right, here we go. I am. This is where things get dangerous. Ooh, tinted rock. Small rock would be great here. Um, this is where things get dangerous for me. Thank you, Small Rock, because my damage is still pretty shit. So I find myself tempted more than I should be to use uh, my cube of meat. That is not very smart of me right there. 
Uh, and using my cube of meat is going to cause me to take damage, and that can cause a little bit of a downward spiral here. What we should do instead is fucking not do that holy shit, and then just, you know, roll the dice on a deal with the devil on this floor. It's not going to be Krampus. Even if it's red chests, they could be useful. It's better than the alternative of not getting a deal with the devil. Yeah, that was real smart. Why don't you just walk on the fucking spikes? God, this kid. How did this kid get 886 hours in the Binding of Isaac? Well, you know, that's one of those things where it's like, the more hours you have, the more likely you are to make that mistake, because you're going to rush a little bit, you know? It's like an air traffic controller. You're like, ah, oh, I don't need to tell them to adjust their vectors today. They've been doing this long enough that they know what to do. Oh, all of a sudden, I've made a terrible mistake. I'm flying on Thursday, so maybe that's why I'm, I'm preoccupied with it. I used to get really, um, I wouldn't say scared. I would say resigned to death uh, when I was flying. I would, I've told this story many times on the, on the channel, but I would always look up the model of plane I'm flying in. And, um, like, recent accidents and incidents, which usually they're not many. Especially not on, like, North American or, or Western European carriers. Which is not me trying to throw shade at any airline here, you know, I'm not in that area of business. I'm just saying, you know, typically I'm flying Canadian and U.S. airlines. They don't crash that much. It, it, it's, we're very lucky that that's the case, but, um, now, it, it, you know, I, back then, whenever I'd get on an airplane, I'm like, okay, 50-50 chance. Either I live or I die. But probably, you know, if you fly like 10 times in a year, you're gonna die. So, that sucks, but it's worth it, right? Because I'll get to preview War of the Vikings or something. Um, which is a true story. But anyway, I, uh, I'm now over that. Kate and I fly a lot. We fly a lot together. Long distance flights don't bother me anymore. Short distance flights, tiny planes, doesn't matter. I'm over it. I really thought that we had a window to get through there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just saying, you know, if you're, if you're afraid of flying, I feel you. I understand, and I, 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 there's nothing, I, I do have one piece of advice for how to get over flying that's not very feasible most of the time, is just fly a lot. Look, if you're, if you're scared of flying, you got an upcoming flight, you were gonna be scared of that flight. That's okay. Um, but, you know, if you fly once a year for, for six or seven years, you might get over it. <laughs> so look forward to that. Also, my other tip for if you're, if you're anxious about flying is fucking take every distraction with you onto the plane. Don't during takeoff. You know when the plane's like, it's not actually what it sounds like, but they turn the engines on, you know, really fast, and then you go like, and you like are totally pushed back in your seat, and you're like, wait, is the plane supposed to be making that noise? I don't know. Um, pull out the in-flight magazine. Pull out your your PSP. Pull out your Vita. Pull out your 3DS. Talk to the person beside you, well, you know, if, if you know them. If you don't, it's a little discon- they're inconsiderate sometimes. Maybe they might be trying to sleep, you know, but, um... You know, distract yourself with 12 different distractions. You're not gonna be able to focus on any of them, but you also will be unable to focus on, you know, the immediacy of the terror you're facing. There's our second guppy item. Um, which- which helps. I do think it helps. That's my two cents. You might be saying, Northern Line, you can't use your electronic devices during, uh... Uh, take off, uh, they have to be stowed. Uh, well, actually, the FAA ruled this year that you can have small electronic devices out during takeoff, and now it's at the airline's discretion. So, you know, if you're if you're not able to use those devices, you should talk to the airline that you're with, because they're the ones that are holding you back, man. You could totally use your 3DS, your Vita, iPad, something like that during takeoff, as long as, uh, as long as your airline's in the 21st century here. Your cell phone, for example, as well. I mean, we all knew it was not a hazard, but, you know, I, I appreciate the FAA. People are always like, it's such a weird direction for this Let's Play to go in right now. Let me tell you about how the FAA gets shit on for all the wrong reasons. Great time to pick up Goathead. People are always like, oh, fucking can't use my telephone during takeoff. How stupid is that? It's an $800 million plane, but my laptop could break its electronics. Yo, here's, like... Aviation safety has gotten so much better in 20 years because of these regulations. Not 20 years, even 30 years, 40 years, 10 years, 5 years, because of these regulations. Nobody complains about that. It's only when the, oh, well, I, I want to use my phone during takeoff, but the FAA is so slow to update. Well, the reason they're slow to update is because they want to they wanna be sure, dog. They want to know that it's not going to cause any issues, and I'm sorry that it's a mild inconvenience for you as you hurtle through, you know, the substratosphere. Cut him some freaking slack here. We are now Guppy and in the Whore of Babylon state, and I'm totally going to take technology. So that is a win. We have, we have just won the game in front of your eyes right now, and you know what? I'm going to take that as a sign 
that um, the FAA is fucking watching this right now, and they're like, you know what? You did good, kid. You're never gonna be a pilot. Your vision is too bad. But we appreciate you over here at the at the at the warehouse. I don't know what the, where they work. Probably like an office building, and then also like every airport in the world. Well, in the in the U.S. at least. Okay, we're on the mom fight. I didn't even realize. I thought we were one floor away from it. If I'd known that, I would have gone to the shop. I thought we were going slower than we were, I guess. But we're very strong now. Red mom. I didn't even articulate that. Uh, take that. Take that. Devil room is pretty much shitty. Yeah, still pretty shitty. Oh my lord. Uh, sure. You know what? We can fly and we're guppy. Let's get some quad shot bullshit going on here. I like the idea of this. Is it actually going to work for us? I think it's going to be a little slower than you might originally think. And that's because, uh, you know, we've got flies here. Our flies are going to be our principal damage dealers. Also a pretty big risk to do this when I think, like, there's a direct correlation between how long a video is and how likely my fucking computer is to blue screen. So this was pretty dumb of me, but, you know, sometimes I make decisions like that. we got champion boss rush as well. Lots of, lots of spirit hearts thus far. This is definitely, like, thus far, an okay decision. I don't think we're gonna take too much damage here. We really are gonna steamroll these enemies pretty quickly as a result of our good damage and our ability to spread that damage out evenly across all the enemies we see. Didn't need to take that spirit hard yet. Also, permanent Polaroid invincibility, of course. Also, like, just a disgusting amount of flies are gonna be generated here. Like, a really gross, literally, amount of flies. A, a, a gross, which, as you know, is uh, 69, of course. In metric, at least. Oh, careful. I mean, that's indicative of how strong we are right there. The way we just took out that double, uh, double monstro champion, even though they had less HP, uh, and little Chad fight there. Pretty strong. So far, so good. And that's a... Gertie, Gertie is a tanky enemy. Yes, it did pretty much take, uh, all of our flies as a result, but still. You know, beggars can't be choosers, probably. We're like, maybe two-thirds of the way through this? I think? Pin should die. It would have been one hit if I could have gotten more flies on the on the body there. Yeah, we're getting pretty close to the end. This is like the husk, right? You get the husk in the hollow. And the silver spoon. A little boy blue and the man in the moon. Tip your waitresses. Yeah, we're on like the second to last, uh, or no, we're on the last wave prior to, uh, prior to the horseman here. Oh, come on, dog. Methinks the bloat doth protest too much. It's gonna be a really fast uh, boss rush, actually. And we're gonna get another item as a result of it as well. Second to last wave. You're done. You are done. Death is actually extremely easy for us to take out because the sights and the horse can all get hit at the same time as the horseman. And this is our final wave right here. We're already like halfway through it. We're already two thirds or three quarters of the way through it. We're already through it. Ooh, we also got Blood of the Martyr, which is the item that I was confused about earlier. Get down! Okay. Very strong Eden run. Very strong Eden run in tight. Forgot we had Robo Baby 2.0 kind of sucking it up back there, too. No offense. I mean, thanks for your support, of course. Every vote counts. Got elections on the brain, man. It's the, I, I've been following the American election. I'm not really that into American politics. But I fucking love stats made simple enough for idiots like me to understand it. Like, I, I'm an unabashed... The backlash is gonna come at some point this year. But I'm an unabashed 538 fan. You know, Nate Silver um, and his statistical approach to analyzing fucking sports and politics because I'm a... You know, I'm Jonah Hill from Moneyball. Basically, right down to my triglyceride count, right? But, um... I, uh... I'm, I'm interested in stuff like that, but also the Canadian election is like fucking... Two... Oh, was that a green flash that I saw there? Please no. Please no. Um, the Canadian election is in two weeks. It's gonna be very interesting to see how that goes. It's the first election... I know this sounds crazy, but as a, as a 26 year old... It's the first election I think I've ever been at home for. The first federal election. Because I was like, there was one when I was like 17, and then there was one when I was 21, but I was in Korea, and I was like, look, 
I, I do want to exercise my democratic right to vote, but also I have no fucking idea how to do this. This is the first one I've ever been at home for, and it's very extremely convenient for me to, to vote, so I'm going to do so, and I'm going to see what that whole process is like. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a 90s kid. I'm a millennial. We were raised to, to vote, and, and, you know, I mean, I think all generations are raised to vote, but we were raised to be upset about things like voter apathy, and I, I've got to do my part finally. I'm not going to tell you who I'm voting for, and if you want to know who I'm voting for, shame on you to some extent. Okay? I This is not like a, a privacy thing. I don't think it's uncouth to ask a friend of yours who they voted for. If you want to get in an argument, uh, that's that's your prerogative. But I also think if somebody doesn't want to tell you, that's fine as well. But, um, you know, I, I'm just the dude who plays Binding of Isaac Rebirth episodes on the internet. You don't need to know what political party I support. And I would be... I would feel weird about using this platform to be like, yeah, I'm voting for the shit party. You should all vote for the shit party because I am. Like, celebrity endorsements are one thing, but I'm not a celebrity, nor do I understand what I'm endorsing. So it would be irresponsible. I always, when I see, you know, entertainers bringing their politics into things, depending on the issue, I can be like, ah, oh, I wish you hadn't done that because it doesn't necessarily make me feel weird about supporting you, but you've made this into a whole thing. I liked you better as that character, I thought you did a good job, but now there's this whole ugliness tied up into it that it's hard to reconcile, and... Maybe that's on me for judging someone for their politics, but that's the reason that... In my in my perspective, or from my perspective, you shouldn't give a shit at all who I'm voting for. Unless I'm literally, like, just drawing a fucking dick butt on the ballot. Because you can't fucking trust any of them, man, so why even try, right? Anyway. My writings are all set regardless. They're, they're, I know 100% of how they're going to go. Because I'm clairvoyant. Also, it feels really weird living in a super wide country. I'm sure that, you know, if you're from, if you're also Canadian or you're American or you're from, like, Russia, I don't know how Russia resolves its uh, elections, but, um, you know, we have multiple time zones in Canada that stretch from, like, there's, there's a four and a half hour span in Canada in terms of time zones. Like, I'm recording this at 2.43 p.m. It is already... 7.13, and yeah, it is a half time zone. It's already 7.13 p.m. in Newfoundland. My day is still, like, in the midst of, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's prime, I guess you could say. People in Newfoundland, you know, several of them are having dinner and getting settled to watch a little bit of TV before bed or something like that. You know, that's, that's how wide this country is. It, so by the time I vote, it'll probably be, like, 4 p.m. my time, which means it'll be, like, 8.30 in Newfoundland, which means that it's, there's a decent chance the election will already be maybe half decided by that point. There, will, there might be a lean to it, let's put it that way. Like, most of most of Canada's population lives in Ontario and Quebec. BC also has a lot of people, but it's the furthest uh, province to the west. And as a result, by the time our votes get counted, it's possible that the province as a whole is not really necessary in order to predict who's gonna win. Of course, it has a, an impact on representation, but... Uh, it's the first time I've ever been in this situation. You know, previously I was like in the East Coast. I want to be a part of it. East Coast, East Coast. You're like right on the the hot button times, right? No longer. Is that a is that a concern for me? I'm just yeah, man. I'll vote whenever I want. Does not like it makes a difference thanks to fucking time zones. It's a weirdly apathetic way to think, but to some extent there is some truth to it. Maybe, I don't know. I, I, maybe, I shouldn't say there's some truth to it, because I just came up with it off the top of my head. Like, is that how you feel? Those of you who have spent, like, your whole lives living in, like, Seattle or California. Is that what it... it or, or anywhere on the West Coast, for that matter. Is that... or Hawaii, I guess. Is that how it feels to you? You're like, yo, dog, I voted, but we already knew that Obama had won by the time I even, you know... By the time I had my lunch that day, we knew how 30% of the seats had gone. I don't know. I don't know, man. Dewey beats Truman. Dewey beats Truman. Let's get out of here. Um, this has been a great run. We get Samson next. Samson's easy. I'm just thrilled, and I mean that, like, capital T-H, thrilled. Fucking Thorium thrilled. That, um, this video looks like the odds are it'll probably actually render and hopefully not have video issues and also not blue screen my computer. Which is pretty dope, because that means that for today I can actually do my job. Which is awesome. Like, I'm a big fan of doing that. Because I, I feel a sense of duty, and also my job is, like, really fun and nice. It's nice to play video games. Feels good. 
Um, and I, I'm kind of okay at this one, which feels even better. Uh, let's go to our Mega Satan fight, and because we have Pinking Shears, and we're also very strong to begin with, I think we're fine to do our Mega Satan fight and not feel like this is going to be a concern. So this is going to be a rare boss rush and Mega Satan fight in one run, and that run is still going to be under 30 minutes. Kind of a big surprise there. I'm stoked we got Shears. Like, Shears was not a good item for us until we realized we were going to fight Mega Satan. At which point it becomes an incredibly good item for us because it's going to persist through this entire fight and the fight is going to be long. Like, prepare yourself for this. We're doing a lot of damage here. Where did You guys spawned before Mega Satan was gone. I'm not sure if I'm for that or against that. That was bad damage on my part. What? You're going to make me fight an Envy followed by a Super Envy? I'm super ornery as a result of your the misgivings you've given me. It's almost Canadian flippin' Thanksgiving, too. It's a great month to be Canadian, man. NHL season starts... in... T tomorrow? <laughs> Which actually will be the day that this goes up. Let me know how that uh, freaking Canucks Flames game goes, eh? Fucking Vertanen made the squad. Hudden, McCann, lost Corrado on waivers, but it's okay. You know, it was... Is G GMJB decided it was time. Plan the parade. Actually, the Canucks are probably going to suck this year. That's okay. They've, they've had their window. And there's nothing wrong. you got to let the other teams have a chance. Except we are going to win the cup this year. And I say we because I plan to be a major part of it. If they ever need someone to play with the Sedins, I'm ready. Greatest dodges of all time. Yo, Shears, turns out you're actually hot fucking garbage on the Mega Satan fight. I had no idea. You don't even touch the Mega Satan face. We have killed him, though. And that was easy. So thanks for watching. Again, I'm going to expedite the process of finishing this so it doesn't blue screen at the worst possible moment. If you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.